Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You see the opening call on the left-hand side. Just hit that button. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is the same as $199 at 22%. And you get it for one full year for $11.95, which is the same as $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And when you get Basil's newsletter, folks, you are going to get an education of a lifetime because he has 12 to 14 archives there that you can understand how he looks at the market, how he rides this wave each and every trading day. Basil Chapman, how you doing? Welcome to 2023. We're on our way. We're on our way, Basil. 2023. Can you believe it? Doesn't it really feel like we've, we've been here for a while, even though it's just a few days? I, I wish I could remember the name of that rock song. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm i with you, man. I, I get it. I get it. Trust so, me. So, yeah, we're, we're looking at this. You just mentioned this. There's just so much going on. But actually, when I, I try to sort out uh, the the strength and the weakness, and I, I'm I agreeing with you in the sense that when you mentioned that the uh, QQQ, the NDX 100, uh, was a little stronger yesterday, that's exactly what, for subscribers from opening call, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at yes. the Dow's had a spectacular move. It's right. taken it's taken uh, a little while to digest the gains. It's held the 200 period moving average. We're still long. We still have uh, almost every day we've had trading longs on the long side. We've taken profits. We've got one again today. Um, and we've got core positions. But the most important thing that I'm looking at here is I need to see the QQQ, that's the index 100, as you mentioned, the QQQ, start to, it doesn't have to lead elite. Well, let me put it this way on an intraday basis, I like it when there's strength there, at least the last few days. I want to start seeing strength in the QQQ, strength in the SMH. This is the semiconductor in this. And actually, the semiconductors are act, acting very well with all the bad news that's going on. They they are telling us a story. And this is a story that when I had callers uh, about a, six weeks or so ago, and they were talking about uh, the FXI, which let me show you the FXI is the large cap. Uh, China ETF, and uh, it was starting to make lo lows and then start to rally. And this was, I think it was in late October, early November. Yeah, late October, early November. And it started to move up and the news was still terrible. And I said, you know what, this is the first time that I can say that the uh, that China might be opening up, even though we haven't really read about it. And if you look at the the FXI, which is, as I say, this is a large cap China ETF, has gone from the 20 level, 20 or 21 level, and it's trading here at 31. And look at the weekly chart. So I think there's a rotation going on. That's been the name of the game since the summer of 2010, where I said if if we get a rotational correction and we don't go back to the lows of 2009, but we don't even get close, but we just have this rotation where the weak sectors start to come on strong and the very strong sectors take a breather. But all that happens is they go sideways. That time is as important as price in, in the marketplace. So if you use time, that's important. And I think that's that's what I'm looking at, because on even if let's just say Thursday is really bad news. If the Dow can hold above uh, the 32,700 level where the 200 period moving average is and, and somehow get through those days, even if it's terribly weak, and you can start to see some strength in the, um, in the other indices, that's using time judiciously. I like that's That's kind of what I'm looking for. And if you look, uh, we've, we've uh, on a steel stock. And look at the steel, uh, Van Eck Vector Steel ETF. Look at this monthly chart. You would never say that this is a major bear market. This is uh, about two-thirds the way from the bottom towards the uh, the, the all-time high that was made at about 70. It's trading right now at 62, 92, 63, let's say. That, I think that's very good action. So I think you have to be very specific. And that's what I've been saying to subscribers. So we, we have now started to look at what I would call 
core positions that have a chance of, if they can survive the shorter term, could turn out to be intermediate term buyers for us. And that's really what I'm looking at. I'm looking at trading positions, potential longer term positions, and single digit stocks that have the potential to give very nice percentage gains. Even though we're only talking percentages, that's not that they've turned the corner and become major buyers, but at least that's a, that's a good way at least to garner some income so that we can build up a kitty in case there's a sharp pullback and we can No, add to I, I can see that too position. because that 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 bill, you know, the structural bill, infrastructure yes. bill, they're going to need so much steel it's unbelievable. I mean, and it's going to all the bridges, all if, if yep. you've been around the country folks, these bridges are like a mess. They're going to get done over. So, I can see that. Yeah. So, as I say, I think it's selective uh, that doesn't mean to say we can't have sudden, serious, serious three, four, five, six percent declines. Uh, it's like the, in the Dow, etc. But I think so far it's been higher highs and higher lows, and I, I hope that that continue. That can continue if we start to see this rotation. I mean, if after all, how else could you explain caterpillar all-time high almost as we as we speak? So there has been there has been a rotation, and I'm, I am concerned if you look at the XLF. The XLF is doing okay, but it is lagging. So that's the, the S&P Financial Spider Fund. And I do like the fact that the IWM, the Russell 2000, for the very first time, is starting to show that it's it's going to tackle that Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone yet again in the weekly chart. If we can finally get above it, that will say, hmm, maybe this time we're going to start to see the small caps uh, actually have a little bit of a rally that's sustainable. So I, I'm being very selected. I must say that the negativity that uh, I, I feel every time I'm reading, whether what a Wall Street Journal, doesn't matter what it is, um, I, I look at the charts and I say, wait a minute, something's wrong with that picture because some of the things that were, yes, the IYM, the, this is the I, sorry, IYW, this is, no, why am I saying that? IYT, that's what I meant to say. The transportation index is still looking very poor. But then they've got the airlines and the airlines, I mean, if anything could have gone wrong with the airlines this the last six, seven months, it's happened. I mean, they've just been under pressure all the time, whether it's the weather, whether, whatever it is. But, uh, you know, so that, that affects the transportation index itself. But when I look at different sectors, I'm kind of impressed at, at what's going on. And I, 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 I feel very strongly that I've got to just ignore news, look at the charts that are working. And so far, we've been able to do that. Um, it's not easy, but I like it, and, and we're going to continue to try to do this. And as I say, to see the SLX, the Steel uh, Market Vectors ETF, actually moving up like this, it says that, yes, there is money going somewhere. So that's, that's the path I'm trying to take. And as folks, the good, the bad, and the ugly is that, yeah, the money's coming out, and then that's the good. And then the bad, the ugly is that there's going to be so much money out here, it's going to be hard to get inflation under control. <laughs> well, that's a big problem. I cannot deny it for sure. Folks, come over to our web website at TFNN. You're going to newsletters. You're going to see the opening call right in the left hand side. Hit that baby. Subscribe to Basil's newsletter. It's an outstanding newsletter. You're going to learn a lot big time. Basil, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.